over there? Is it a ghost? Is it the devil about to strangle you to death? Or is it your imagination? Evil comes in many different ways. Evil can be simple, or it can be complex. Spirits, ghouls, witches, werewolves, vampires, monsters, and man. Yes, evil. Evil can come to you in the daytime. It can come to you in the nighttime. But the most important thing, the most hideous thing, the most fearful thing. You'll never know when evil will strike you. the introductions. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Graveyard Stories. Tonight, you are going to be experiencing a slice of terror, a slice of mystery, and a huge slice of the macabre. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, after this is over, you're going to be screaming, screaming for the daylight presenting you with stories unlike those you've ever heard. Stories about the living dead. Stories about greed and revenge. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, you won't believe your senses. My good friend, the storyteller, is going to be taking you on your ride. He's a weird and bizarre creature, but he weaves together stories that are unlike anything you've ever heard or, or seen or experienced. Just remember, when this theater's doors are closed, they're locked and there's no way out. So, better make sure your pacemakers have extra batteries. Make sure you've got clean underwear. And above all, pull up your socks because you are going, you're going on a ride to hell.
Where are you headed, kind stranger? Nowhere in particular. Well, that's a coincidence. I'm headed there myself. Would you care for a ride? The clock is ticking, friend. What's it going to be? Sure. Thanks. Just one lonely traveler helping another. Welcome to my home away from home, Vincent. How do you know my name? I know a lot of things about people. I'm somewhat of a psychic, if you will. Mmm, spooky. No, I'm just fucking with you. I saw the name on the guitar case. So, uh, you live in this thing, huh? Well, for many a wandering mile. But my real home is down south. You see, I work in a traveling haunt show, and well, I'm on my way there to meet them now. So, uh, what do I call you? Names are so insignificant, really. I much prefer to be called by my occupation. <laughs> Mortician? <laughs> storyteller. Okay. You see, I've been a storyteller for as long as I can remember. It's one of my favorite pastimes. Well, that and reading the tarot cards. Oh. So, uh, what kind of stories do you? Oh, all kinds of stories. Stories of life and death. Stories of love. Stories of loss. And stories of human suffering and the macabre. <laughs> kind of depressing, if you ask me. Oh, no. I find it fascinating. You see, my stories are based in truth, not like that drivel that you find in the fairy tales. Can I hear one? But I thought that you said they sounded too depressing. <laughs> well, what else are we going to do? I've collected so many stories over the years, Vincent. I'm not even sure where to start. Ah, uh, okay, okay. I know the perfect tale to begin on. Good evening. This marks the fifth in a series of grisly murders to take place within the last two weeks. Daniel Whitcomb was found dead outside of his home in a nearby dumpster. From the surveillance camera on the side of the mini-mart next door, 
police now know the killer was wearing some kind of plastic devil mask while committing the murder. Locals are asked to stay inside at night unless they must leave their residence. This is Nancy Tom reporting from WTIZ. Back to you, John. What in the hell is this world coming to? I told you about blasting that shit in my house. I asked you a question, girl. To clarify, this is my mom's house, not your house. You just sleep on our couch and drink all our beer. What'd you just say to me? Did I stutter? I don't care how you talk about your mom or your little friends, but you'll show me some respect. Will you be getting the bell out again tonight, Pops? Well, now that's not such a bad idea. Well, hurry up. I've got plans and I don't want to be late. Going out again tonight, are we? Better than watching reruns of Cops with you. My, my, my. You know your mother should have taught you some manners. Maybe she can teach you some while she's at it. Haven't you heard? There's a killer on the loose. Besides, what business do you have being out this late at night anyway? Is it so hard to believe that I just need some fresh air? They say five people have been killed this week. Doesn't that make you a little scared? Not particularly. Hmm. It should. You got it all backwards, bitch. I could kill you right now bury your body where they would never find it. I'm seriously shaking in my boots. You can't go out tonight, Alexandria. It's too dangerous out there. I can do whatever I want, Jesse. You know what I like to be called. And you'll respect that. I'm sorry, Daddy. <laughs> yeah, that's better. Can I go now? You'll be sorry. Not as sorry as you'll be if you don't leave me alone. Is that some kind of a threat? Take it however you want. Hey! You come back here! Come back here, you skank! I said come back here! I bet that maniac cut you down like a dog! I bet you never come back here, you hear me?
bitch. Game over. Come on out. Come out, come out, wherever you are, little girl. <laughs> oh. Is Alexandria afraid the killer's coming after her? Surely not. She's not scared of anything. Hey, I'm just fooling around. And I'm tired of waiting on you. Get your ass down here. I'm going to get the belt out again. Let's go home. Alexandria. Okay, it was me in the black truck. I was trying to teach you a lesson. There's no killer out here. Let's go. Oh God, please don't kill me. Please don't kill me, please. Who's scared now, Daddy? Oh my God, it can't be, it can't be. It's dangerous out here tonight, Daddy. Don't kill me, please. To my humble abode. Home here. I do this. <laughs> yes, it's not much, but uh, it does keep me dry during the spring rains. This one's getting a cavity. So, storyteller, do you get uh, many crowds here? Well, the numbers have dwindled, but. Uh, People do still like to come hear me read the tarot cards. The what? Tarot cards. You see, it's an ancient tradition to sit by candlelight and read the cards. They tell so many things. So, storyteller, what are those cards for? Fate. I can tell anyone's future by reading the tarot cards. You're saying that deck of cards can tell someone what their future holds? Well, of course. But people come from miles around to hear me tell the future with the cards, uh, or uh, if they even have one. This is crazy. <laughs> well, not everyone's a believer, but uh, in all my years, I've never been wrong. Okay. So tell me the story of someone whose future has been foretold by those cards. But you don't wish to know about your own? <laughs> no, I'm good. I'm just curious as to how they work. Suit yourself, Vincent. <clears throat> I remember a man who came to see me once. Sam Whitman. He was a professor of ancient Egyptian culture. He had himself worried sick about a mummy he and his friend had discovered years earlier. Whoever disturbs the tomb of the dead shall suffer an internal damnation, he proclaimed. 
he and his friend respected the mummy's remains. But when others did not heed this warning, Sam soon discovered he had a fate worse than death awaiting him. Professor Whitman, are you okay? It's, it's all good. It's all good. Okay. Morning, Sam. You look like hell. Why don't you tell me how you really feel? All right. You look like hammered hell. I can always count on honesty from my best friend. I didn't sleep well last night, okay? You party too much. Maybe you should try spending a quiet evening at home instead of out bar hopping and chasing women. You know, Charlie, it's true. I spend most of my time on women and booze. And the rest, I just waste it. With waste being the operative word. Oh, pipe down, will you? I had a bad dream about Egypt. Egypt? We haven't been to Egypt in six years. I know. My mind's working overtime or something. I, I need a vacation. Not until we get these documents cataloged, huh? Okay. We picking up where we left off yesterday? You bet. Read me the uh, codes and I will get them logged into the system. Hey, check this out, Charlie. We were just talking about Egypt. Right here's a copy of that scroll we found from the 18th dynasty. That was a hell of a trip. You think we made the right call? Keeping the mummy here at the university and instead of shipping it off to some museum? Yes, I do. Remember what the Townsend Museum did with the one the Miller boys found? They auctioned it off to the highest bidder. We didn't want that to happen again. Yeah, I, I suppose you're right, Charlie. Why do you ask? It's been there for years and you've never been concerned before. I don't know. Maybe it has something to do with that nightmare I had. The mummy's not waking up to get you, Sam. Even if you did perform the ritual and read the scroll. It's all just a bunch of mumbo jumbo to scare people away. Yeah, it is kind of silly, isn't it? I suppose you're right. I'm always right. Now, read me the damn code that will be here all day. 37.42. 37.42. Dr. Whitman! Trevor! How can I help you? Hey, got a question for you. Sure. What is it? A couple weeks ago, in a lecture, you were talking about all your travels through Egypt and Asia. Yeah, I tell you what, classwork is great, 
nothing beats a real world experience you're going to get next year out in the field. Okay, well, here's the deal. Is there any way that a couple friends and I could come over and check out the collection? I think we can arrange that. Dr. Spruce and I actually keep the artifacts here in the attic. Um, with my faculty clearance, I think we could go through that this evening. Okay, well, I don't want to put him out or anything. I mean, would oh, it be okay with him? It's no imposition to him. I guarantee you he's not doing anything. Well, how do you know that? He never does. Oh. <laughs> well, hey, um, it'd be great. I mean, I, I'll tell you what. Why don't you and your friends meet me here, say, 8 o'clock? Okay. I'll have Dr. Spruce with me. He actually knows the artifacts better than I do. I mean, he didn't have to come. It's okay if you just unlock the place. And I guarantee you. Oh, it's no problem. Okay, okay. Well, hey, this is, this is a big deal for us. We, yeah, this is great. I'll tell you what. Meet us at the north entrance. We'll come in. We'll take a tour. We'll show you the artifacts. 8 o'clock tonight? 8 o'clock will be perfect. All right. I'll All see right. you. All right. Thanks. See you, Trevor. Thanks. See you this evening. See you, Doctor. You're late. Fashionably late, Charlie. You need to chill out. What's the hurry? We meet at the same time every week. I like to keep a schedule. So I've noticed. What kept you? One of my grad students stopped by. He had a question. We're going to give them a tour of the artifacts this evening. We are, are we? Yes, Charlie, we are. What if I had plans? Well, thanks to me, you do have plans. With me and my students. Hee-haw. Just how I wanted to spend my evening. Entertaining. Oh, relax. We're not meeting until eight or so. You'll have plenty of time to get that nap in of yours. Hey, you can't do that. I just did. You watched me. Why do I do this to myself every week? Well, what else would you be doing, Casanova? Oh, shit! Yes, you left yourself open for a double attack. No, it's not that. I have a meeting tonight with the Dean at 7.30. So? Did you forget already? The grad students? The artifacts? Charlie, could you give them the tour, please? This is typical. You're gonna leave me to deal with the students tonight, aren't you? Oh, come on. It won't take long. And besides, they're good students. We'll give you a chance to show off them artifacts. Well, I do like to show off the collection. <sighs> All right. Ah, that's why I love you, Charlie. That's why you and I are BFFs. As I said, why do I put up with this every week? Because you enjoy getting your ass kicked by me. To our inner sanctum. Wow, this is incredible. You have some really great finds, Professor. Uh, this is great, Professor. Can we pick this stuff up? Um, just be very careful. Oh, we will. We will. Judging from the condition of the wrappings, 17th Dynasty, maybe? Yes, that's right. You know your history. It's a hobby. Are these uh, pieces from royalty? Yes, they belong to the great Queen Tara. Now Sam and I got them on our first trip down the Nile. Wow. They're beautiful, aren't they? You guys really have something here. Thanks. Did 
Do you see these jars? Check out this detail. Check it out. It's pretty cool. Hey, um, what's this we got over here? Can you oh. tell me what we got? These are great finds. I was ever telling you, Trevor. These contain great queen terrace. And these are extremely rare and very valuable. Uh, she was in the 17th dynasty and uh, what preceded uh, uh, Queen uh, Nefertiti and uh, Cleopatra. This was also hers that was found in her sarcophagus. And that's how the detail case. So were these like something that they would have passed down or did they have them special made for these them? These were very specially made. Okay. Turn around, Professor. What's the meaning of this? We're, we're taking all this stuff. But they belong to Professor Whitman and me. We've traveled the world to collect them. You know, I appreciate that. This stuff's gonna make us very rich, okay? But they don't belong to you. But we're taking them. I will not stand here stand back. and let stand you back. take them. It don't matter what you're gonna do, we're gonna take them. Stand back! I trusted you. Sam don't trusted you. Don't come any closer you. to me. Trevor, please. Don't come any closer. We have the gun. Get out of the way, Professor! Come on, grab the shit, let's go! Come on. Hurry up! Hey! Hey! But you never said we were gonna kill somebody. Hey, shit happened, okay? He came at me. We gotta get the hell out of here. We don't have time to talk. Come on, grab that stuff by the door. What about the money? Too big, we'll never be able to carry it out here. Let's go. Bobby, get move. Bobby, go. and I had to do it, okay? You know, he wouldn't stop. He wouldn't get out of my way. I had no other choice. You had to do it? You didn't have any other choice? What if somebody's seen you, Trevor? It's more than just taking some items now. We're talking about big time now. You killed somebody. Stop it, guys. This isn't gonna get us anywhere. I'm not gonna stop it. He needs to hear this. Stop the fucking car right now. Stop the car! <laughs> Where are you going? Give us a few minutes, all right? So we good? Yeah, we're good, let's go.
Forgive me for what I'm about to do. I know it's wrong. Charlie, this is the only way I can avenge your death. O oh, ancient power of Egypt, bring about the great spirit of Amon Ka. Bring the dark soul to avenge the wrong that has been done to me. Go now. Do what needs to be done. Bring about the great spirit of Amon Ka. Come now. Come now. Where the hell is Bobby? I don't know. I haven't heard from him. We gotta get the hell out of here. If he didn't show up in a minute, I'm leaving. Okay. Well, at least I'm here like I'm supposed to be. He's running late. This is this is shit. What the hell was that? I don't like the sound of that.
No, get back. This isn't what we agreed upon. Look, I know I owe you a soul, but it doesn't have to be mine. That's not what we agreed upon. <laughs> fictional, wasn't it? Perhaps. So it looks like you have all the creature comforts of home here. I do all right. Hmm. So, storyteller, how long have you been with this traveling haunt show? As long as time can tell. I really have no memory of anything else. Oh. Must get mighty lonely. Lonely is just a state of mind, my friend. You see, I keep myself entertained with my trinkets and my tales. Mm. I understand. What's this? Oh, that. That is a black magic doll. Black magic? Bullshit. <laughs> no, no, no. All of my trinkets are the genuine article. Poor, poor Mrs. Anderson. <laughs> what a life she lived. And what a death she died. Sounds mighty grisly to me. Just uh, relax and I'll tell you a story of loss and revenge. Hello? Hi, Dr. Pierce. Yeah, I'm, I'm doing great. Nothing's changed since I saw you this morning. Well, I'm actually getting ready to have a party, so I can't really talk right now. Yeah, I'm getting ready for Allie's 10th birthday party, and I've got people coming over, so, um, I promise I'm, I'm having a, I'm doing fine. I'm having a great day. No, you, you have nothing to worry about, I assure you. All is well. Yeah, I, you know, I would love to chat, but I really, um, I'm finishing up the cake and I've got people coming over, so I can't really talk right now, but I promise if I need you, I will give you a call, okay? 
I really appreciate you checking on me. I gotta go, Dr. Pierce. Thank you. Bye-bye. Allie, I hope you're getting ready. Allie. Hey, are you getting ready? They're gonna be here any any minute. Allie. Where are you? You need to get ready and come out. Everybody's gonna be here soon. Uncle Art and Aunt Rhea are coming. Allie. Allie, where are you?
Allie? I'm down here, Mommy. Allie! Allie Renee! Are we locking doors now? You need to get your butt out here. Allie, you, you're gonna miss the party. All these people are coming. Allie, open this door. Allie, honey, baby, please open the door. Mommy, sorry, she didn't mean to yell. Honey, I, I don't want you to miss anything. Papa and Nana are coming and all of the family and your friends. Honey, please, you need to come. Again? Hello? Oh my gosh, Dr. Pierce, seriously, I am fine. I am trying to have a party here. Allie is driving me crazy. I have people coming over. You've got to stop calling me. I am fine. I will, Dr. Pierce, I am fine. I will see you in the morning like I do every single day. Do not call again. Do you understand? What's going on here? She's gone. I came in to give her meds and I found her like this. I could have predicted this. I kept trying to talk to her, but she just would not listen. It's a sad case. 
I guess the guilt finally got to her. Well, let's go ahead and call this. We'll say the time of death is uh, 3.57 p.m. We'll need to notify the next of kin, and then we can talk about doing an autopsy. Hey, by the way, do you know what they're serving in the cafeteria this evening for dinner? What the hell? Hungry. So, Storyteller, who's this old dude? Oh, that's just the boss. He's lurking around here. Somewhere. Hmm. So tell me another story, one of those creepy stories you like to tell. <laughs> Hi, honey. Yeah? Oh, you're coming home. I thought you were on your way home tomorrow. Oh, okay, I see. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm just, I'm just out shopping. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I should be home by the time you get there. Yeah, yeah, okay, just be safe, Tell you know, Call me if anything happens, if you get delayed again or anything. Um, mm, okay, yeah, I'll see you when you get home. Mm -hmm. You too.
Excuse me. Can I bother you for a second? Sure thing, ma'am. What can I do for you? I'm on my way to Covington, and I seem to have lost the interstate somewhere, and I was hoping you could get me back to it. You look a little stressed out. Um, would you like something to drink? Uh, I have hot coffee. I can get you a soda. No, 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 I'm good. I really just need directions back to Interstate 80. Well, let me grab you some coffee and then I'll fill you in. Hold on just I one really second. I really don't need it. Here you do, my dear. Oh. Warm your bones on this chilly day. Oh, thank you. <laughs> now, where was it you said you were headed again? Covington. I'm on my way back home, and I don't know how the hell I got all the way out here. Well, that's easy to do, especially when you get off on these old country roads. I've <laughs> done a time or two myself. Right. Uh, so about those directions. Oh, right, right, right. Um, there's two options. Um, one is Highway 12. Uh, it's a nice, smooth road up around the mountain. Um, there's another route, but it's a little more rugged. Okay. Oh, right, right, right. Uh, to get to Highway 12, uh, you have to go back up the road, and uh, at the first intersection, make a right. You'll go about mm, three miles to the next intersection where you'll turn left. Then you weave your way up around the mountain until you reach the interstate. You'll see it. Okay, um, that sounds like quite a haul. Is there a faster route? I mean, you mentioned another one. Forget I mentioned that route. Uh, you don't want to go that way. Listen, Mr. Uh, Walt, Walt Grady. Mr. Grady, I really need to be getting home to my husband. I mean, I'm on thin ice as it is. I really need to be getting back. You really should forget that I mentioned that other road. Uh, it's, it's not exactly safe. It's not safe? Most folks around here avoid that road. There's kind of an urban legend that goes along with it. Mr. Grady, I'm really, really in a hurry. An urban legend. Well, when you head down County Road 45, uh, you'll come to a long covered bridge. It's rustic and sits over a lake. Legend says there is a goblin underneath the bridge. And he'll eat whoever crosses over it. Um, that is if he can catch them. That sounds crazy. That's why I was hesitant to tell you. They say the goblin sits under the bridge, listening and waiting for someone to cross. They say he drags the lifeless bodies of his victims under the bridge and tears them apart limb by limb and then devours their flesh. Townspeople have heard all the stories, and so they stay far, far away from that bridge. Out-of-towners are the unlucky ones. All right, well, thank you very much for the coffee and your time. I'm pretty sure I can remember the route you told me. Uh, I never caught your name. It's Dakota. Nice to meet you, Dakota. Nice to meet you. Be careful out there. And if you get turned around, um, head back here and I'll take you to the interstate myself.
through this. I've got to get home. Bullshit. This is bullshit. You should see it with the lights off. <laughs> no, I'm good. It's an awful lot of blood. Oh, no, it's just a little, uh, Corn syrup and red food coloring. Shorter ruins a facade, doesn't it? It's not what people see that's scary. It's what they think. You see, the mind is one of the scariest things on the planet. Nothing is uh, able to contort reality in a way that the levels of the subconscious do. I suppose you have a story about that. As a matter of fact, I do. Well, let's hear it. Oh, it's quite a grisly one. I don't know if you're ready for this one. Well, I made it this far. How scary could it be? Yeah. Well, let your mind decide. <laughs>
How'd you do today, Keith? I, 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 I don't I, like to be lied to. I ask you a question. How'd you do today, Keith? A few hundred? Six? More? Something like that. Something like that? What, are you too stupid to count the money? Gimme. Oh, you did well today, Keith. You're a regular businessman, aren't you? You know what? I could just kill your ass right here and nobody would ever notice. One less dirt bag for me to arrest. What do you think about that? You can't just kill people. I will do whatever I want. You hear me? Whatever I want. You can't just walk around and do this shit to people. You don't really have any power over anyone. Oh, we'll see about that. I'll have you killed. I have friends. I'll see that you die. Yeah, because you're like so influential. Well, look who's on the ground begging for their life. And look who's holding the gun. I'll see you in hell. I finally nailed Keith Hitchcock today. Oh yeah? Yeah. What charge did you get him on? <laughs> Possession. He had a big wad of bills on him. He was dealing again. Mm. Well, is he in holding right now? No. He's dead. What? He resisted arrest. I mean, he pulled a knife. Wouldn't back down. So you killed him? What's that supposed to mean? I mean, he's not worth anyone's time. I mean, walking around taking up space. I mean, be that as a may, Mitch, you can't walk around shooting up the whole place like it's your fucking playground. I mean, how many dirty killings have you had in the last couple of years, man? Two, three? You know, when I first started this job, the streets were clean. Sure, sure, we had problems, but nothing like now. I mean, all these bleeding heart liberals making the laws. The streets are now overrun by vermin like Keith Hitchcock. So I say good riddance to the bastard. Hey, man, listen. I understand your wife was killed. Don't. Don't talk about my wife, you hear me? Sorry, man, but listen, I mean, come on. It's sometime late at night. All the lights are out when you're at home by yourself and there's the whole world's faded away. Something's got to eat at you, man. I mean, something's got to be bugging at you deep in your conscience. You can't have a conscience in this line of work, Russo. No. Uh, protect and serve, that is the bottom line. I am protecting the world from evil. I'm a goddamn superhero. Yeah. Yeah, you're a real superhero. Hello? Where? Alright, location. ID on the body. Really? Alright, I'll be right there. What you got? A cold one? Yes, so that was. That's Detective Lewis. Oh, and by the way, guess we found the Morgan Cemetery. You got it, Keith Hitchcock. So? I mean, how many times is this going to happen? One of these days, something's going to slip, and this is going to get traced right to your door, Mitch. No, it's not going to happen. In fact, you're going to be on the scene to make sure that doesn't happen. Yes, sir. <laughs> Look, don't forget, buddy boy, who got you this job in the first place. You owe me. Yeah. All right, well, cheers to you, Mitch. Gotta go. Shit.
Yeah, man. What? It's my sunglasses. Oh, fuck. Look, Russo, make this go away. Do it. Come on. All right, man. Okay. Oh, shit. Oh, God. Oh, shit. Calm down, calm down, calm down. All right, all right. All right we can do this. We can do this. We got to get out of here. All right. Airport, 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 airport. Hello? Yes. Yes, I would like I would like to book a ticket for one way Mexico City. Yeah. As soon as possible. If you got something in the next couple of hours, that would be great. No. Um tomorrow morning, at 9 a.m.? Yeah. Yes, that'll work. That'll work. Okay. Uh, Mitchell Conrad. C O N R A D. R A D. Yes. Well, I'll pick the ticket up tomorrow morning, all right? Yeah, thanks. Crap. All right, all right, calm down, calm down. You can do this. All right, all we gotta do is get through the night. I can do that. Then we're out of here. Oh, shit. What? Lieutenant Conrad, join us. Got a seat for you right over here. Come, 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 come. Right here. There's a good spot for you. Right there. No, 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 this is no dream, Lieutenant. This, this is the hell that you created for yourself. It looks good, doesn't it? It looks good. It looks good. Now, where were we? It's her turn. Hold on. We have all the time in the world, remember? Isn't that right, Lieutenant? All the time in the world! There's not much life and death, Lieutenant. I had dreams, you know, but you took them all away. I, 
I, I, I didn't know. I don't know. I... You're so pitiful. Do it. Do it. Come on, do it. See, Lieutenant, do you see now this hell? This hell that you created for us? Do you see it? I didn't realize. Oh, didn't realize. Didn't realize, huh, when you put a bullet or a knife in one of us that we would die? Are you that goddamn stupid? No, I, if I could take it back, I, I would take I it bet, back. I bet we had to show you this so you would understand the pain that you put all of us in. Now you will understand the pain. No. <laughs> no, it's there we go, there we go, right there, that's the spot. It's horrible, isn't it, Lieutenant? Having your life in someone else's hands, someone else having all the control. No one, no one should have all the control, especially a piece of crap like you. Just doing my job! Oh, your job, your job, huh? You think just because your wife was killed by some dealer, you can walk around and play God? Look at him! Look at him, everyone! The righteous Lieutenant Conrad! Look at him! Protect and serve! That's what they say! Protect and serve my ass! Take your best shot, Lieutenant! Take your best! Do it. Do it, chicken shit. Just get it over with. Pull the trigger, big boy. <laughs> Take your best shot, Conrad. <laughs> Take your best shot. Take your best shot. That's right. Do it. Come on. Come on, Come on. Come on you pig. You do it. We'll buy you some donuts. Let's go, pig. Come on, pig. Shoot yourself, you coward. You righteous son of a bitch. Mitch, you in there? Hey, just want to let you know, Lewis ruled the case as a drug deal gone bad. Guess that means you're off the hook. Mitch! Whatever.
thought I'd take you down south to the bus station, let you get on your way. On my way where? Uh, I've got nowhere to go. <laughs> Fate has a path for us all, Vincent. You just have to learn to trust it. Are we in a hurry or something? Hello? What's the hurry? I've already delayed you far too long. Delay me for what? The inevitable. This can't be happening. We all have dark secrets, Vincent. And it's those secrets that seal our fate. It's just a... Just a matter of life. This can't be happening. I can't be dead. I can't be dead. I can't be dead! Don't worry, fellow traveler. Your story will not go untold. Have it, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, don't worry about Vincent. We'll take good care of him. But take my advice. When you leave the theater and you're out in the street, look behind you. Look under the cars. When you get home, lock the doors. Pull the drapes. Look under your bed, in your closet. Pull the blankets over you. You never know. You never know when death will strike. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, those are our graveyard stories. And I'm sure, I'm sure you're dying to hear more.